Hey, bunny, guess what? Uh, red hot chili peppers. No, 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 bunny, not that. No, you know, you know the, you know the letters. The what? Huh? The the letters. Huh? Uh, my baby just wrote me a letter. No, the letters. Wink, wink. Huh? 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 Oh, the letters. Come on, buddy. I'm talking about the fan letters that I've been sending Betty White for the last uh, 27 years. She is hot. She is hot. Did, have you found out if she does anal yet? Three letters a week, every week, each letter ridiculously lengthy and extremely pornographic. Nice. Three letters a week, every week for 27 years. Well, after all of these years, Betty White finally answered me. It took so long, so many letters. My hand was cramping from all the writing and self-flagellating I was doing. Uh, I, un, only semi-related those two things are. Yeah. But finally, after 27 years, after over 27 years, she finally answered me. Yes. Finally wrote me back. So... So, the answer is yes, she's totally into it. All right. She just has a few rules. It. She just has a few ground rules, a few caveats, okay? Yeah. So, first off, I have to be dressed like Robert Mitchum. That one is first and foremost. I have to be dressed as Robert Mitchum the whole time. Not too big of, not too bad, not too bad, not a huge demand. Yeah, nay, yeah, yeah. That one's that that one's definitely <laughs> something. Like that. Secondly, she very specific about this. She has to be blindfolded the entire time, but the blindfold needs to be made out of vicuna fur. What's a vicuna? See, I had to bing that. Yeah. So I it i binged that one and bing told me that vicunas are small llama like animals from peru and 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 i think that's doable yeah i think it's definitely doable yeah thirdly not only do i have i i not only have to agree to be pegged uh no problem but also, I have to sign some sort of waiver absolving Betty White and her people of any lasting damage she might do to me. Oh, okay. Apparently, apparently, the rumor goes, Betty White just goes apeshit when she's pegging a dude. <laughs> <clears throat> like, like, like Jim Carrey in The Mask. Uh-huh. That level of energy. Think of like the Tasmanian devil. So just like a tornado of smoke, just, uh -huh. just just moving around and all of these limbs moving all over the place and just. So, so imagine that, but with a dildo harness. Uh-huh. Basically. And that, finally. That she is, has named. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, this is the and only. Part older than you are. <laughs> and finally, this is the part. This is the only part that troubles me a little bit. She, the safe word is Vastra Gataland. Uh huh. So yeah, I had to bing that. that too. Apparently, that's released an ancient evil or two. No, apparently, apparently that's a small region on the western coast of Sweden, uh, Vastagataland. And so I think that Betty White purposefully chose a difficult word for the safe word because she wants to hurt me. Yeah. You know, she that's wants what it to hurt like. me. And I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I'm worried, but also I'm like really hard right now <laughs> about it. Anyway, what, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. It's homework time yet again on the old Popon Film podcast. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
people of the internet your attention, please. Cease your retweeting and your kinky tumbling and kindly pay attention. Each week, the dreaded and vaguely sci-fi sounding Council of Natasha's selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. Yes. A homework assignment that is meant to be for people. People who are honest and open and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So get the hell out of here, Chevy Traverse. (laughs) Okay, what has the Chevy Traverse done to us? There are these commercials... And one of those, like, actual people. These are actual people. And so it, these people have been chosen to be part of a commercial for the Chevy Traverse. And they're checking out this all-new Chevy Traverse. And the windows are really tinted, like, super tinted. They're checking out this cool, hot, new car. And, oh, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, you, you can. This is a, a great uh, family vehicle for the whole family. Why don't you check out the inside? And then they open up the car in the commercials. They open up the car, and inside is their entire family. Okay. Their mom, their dad, their grandma. And they're like, oh, my oh my goodness, what are you doing here? Well, it's a family car. The Chevy Traverse is a family vehicle, so we had to get your family here. Yeah. That is a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Oh man, I got a commercial. I'm going to be doing a car commercial. This is so exciting. I'm going to be doing this commercial. And then you and then I open up the car and my freaking mom and dad are there. <laughs> Goddamn nightmare. I just I'd start screaming. Ah, and close the door on them. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many years I've been trying to get away from these people? Yeah. Oh my god. I open up the car door. Stevie, you need to cut your hair. You look like a bum. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. Chevy Traverse. Yeah. F- fucking Chevy Traverse. And this week's homework assignment is a good old fashioned palate cleanser. Yes. Wait, you ask trepidatiously. How is this a palate cleanser, Steve? Well, allow me to retort, Bruce. So last week, we took the I-40 and got off the I-40 east and then took the I-35 northbound and rode that sucker straight into beautiful scenic crazy town. <laughs> Last week, we discussed the crazy story of a YouTuber named Yahweh Rules 2 who has been plastering Oklahoma City with flyers about his crazy-ass conspiracy about demons Uh in cloned transsexual bodies. That was fun. A lot of fun. A ton of fun. It was a bunch of laughs. But it was a hoot. It was. It was. It was a hoot and or a holler. But the thing is, is that It was fun, but, on the other hand, I am reminded of the lyrics to a song from celebrated award-winning indie folk rock band Sesame Street. Yes. Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above, I would miss all the places and people I love. So although I might like it for one afternoon... I don't want to live on the moon. It's what I said about homosexuality. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is crazy town is a really fun place to visit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you don't want to start payments on a nice townhouse there. You know what I'm saying? No. You don't want to. You don't want to really get too cozy. Not a place to open a strip mall. Yeah. Because when you if you stay too long in Crazy Town, then that's all you see. Everything is a conspiracy. Ooh, ooh, deep state Illuminati, Illuminati Freemason, globalist Baskin Robbins, Foot Clan, Gestapo, soldier farmers are eating kittens because of the Obamas and George Soros and Timothy Busfield. <laughs> it's your brain, buddy. Yes. 
It's hard to get the stench and the stain of crazy off the upholstery of your mind. This is true. So, I just thought that it might be best this week to just take some time away from Crazy Town and discuss something that's just normal and simple and white frickin' bread. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, this week we're discussing a 1959 educational short called The Troublemaker. Yeah. This short is about a young high school kid who kind of looks like a drag queen version of Roger Corman era Jack Nicholson. Yes. In fact, the more I think about it, the more it's the more it, it's obvious to me that all the men in this video are all women. Yes. And women in this video, the woman in this video is actually a man. Yes, of course. They're all Illuminati demon transsexual robotoids, money. <laughs> everywhere. They're all around me. And they're all they're all around me and see only I know about it, bunny. Because no one no one else does because they're all demon possessed robotoids. Yes. Maxwell, how you doing? Did you eat? Did you eat all your food? You got full? You're always full. You're always full. You never eat all of your dinner. How are you going to grow up to be a six foot five WWE champion? Is that his goal? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, like punch somebody's teeth see, over, see. over your teeth out. You want to punch somebody's teeth out? Who are you, five year old Jesus? <laughs> That's a Bible reference. Yeah. You're a, you're a, you're a kid scientist. Oh, well, that's that's interesting. That actually fits in with what I'm about to say here. This educational short turned me, and this is true, into a theoretical physicist because uh-huh. I really wanted to somehow make time travel possible so I could go back in time to 1959 and slap a bitch. Oh god, yes. Jesus Christ. It's one of those where like like y- you needed to make a public service film about this? Yeah. Yeah, like a like a Yeah. It mm-hmm. yes, that's a, What? Okay, well then you're gonna have to wait because I'm in the middle of the podcast. Okay, so just wait. Okay, okay. Can you cool your jets? Cool. Then cool them. This is a 1959 educational short from book publisher McGraw Hill. Yes. And they're still around, so that's exciting. That was exciting to me. Like, ah, I know them. I <laughs> Interesting fact about McGraw Hill in 2015, McGraw Hill got into a lot of hot water because of a school textbook, a school geography textbook that they uh, created that listed slaves as workers. Ah, okay. They got into a shit ton of controversy about it. The textbook literally read the African slave trade brought millions of workers to the United States. Oh, really? Oh, so many workers. Oh, I'm so happy. Let me show you the break room. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, boo, McGraw-Hill, you suck ass. Yes. This roughly 12-minute video is about a high school student named Mel who really shouldn't wear polka dots. No. Really? What the fuck was up with that? No, that was I, just wrong. I do not know. Mel is a big time shit stirrer. So he starts off talking shit about a girl at school. And then for no real reason, he decides to focus on screwing with the entire school football team. Not exactly sure why Mel wants the high school football team to fail, but 
you got to think this is 1959. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that it's because Mel's in the closet. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he's just watching this football team and watching these young men putting on outfits. And he's just so desperately wanting to be a part of the football team. Yeah. To be with the football team in the locker rooms, the showers. This is my theory. I, I, I think it's a very sound theory. Thank you. You are welcome. Interesting callback, Bunny. Interesting callback. This educational short was one of hundreds and hundreds of educational shorts that was directed by a man named Herc Harvey. Herc Harvey. He did hundreds of educational shorts and only one movie. A certain film called Carnival of Souls. Oh. Home of the Black Dress Warehouse. Yes. Who, who is a, And of course, they are the first sponsor of the Pope on Film podcast. In fact, we have a commercial for them right now. Uh, uh, without any further ado, uh, we would now like to take a break for a few words from our sponsor. Do you like wearing drab, ill-fitting clothing? Then chances are you're a Mormon. <laughs> so come on down to the Black Dress Warehouse and bring your sister wives. We are America's leading supplier of black, scratchy, ill-fitting clothing. Black Dress <laughs> Warehouse off of Route 9 and Main Street, right next to, to the Chicory Dump and the ghost of Circuit City. Yes. Black Dress Warehouse. That's our, uh, that's our uh, first and uh, best sponsor right there. Yes. So we, we owe them. At least they keep yeah. telling us that. Yeah. We owe them a lot. Max will stop banging on the walls. So, Bunny, I'm going to go off script here, and I'm going to talk about my daughter, Amber. Okay. I was hoping that she would be here, but she decided that she had to work today, which screws everything up because this is uh this is Supernatural Day and she does a really good job of uh, distracting Eleanor while Natasha and Bella watch their show. This is like a, 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 an important time in the week for Mommy. Oh, uh, and by the way, mark your calendars, guys. March 1st. Supernatural, yeah. Supernatural, season 13, episode 16. They're calling it Scooby Natural. Oh. Sam, really? and Dean Sam and Dean become animated characters and enter the world of Scooby Doo. This is an actual thing, and it's going to be horrible, and I'm super excited. I, 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 I. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not sure how to feel about that. You're so unsure how to feel about that, that you started singing crazy train. That's right. I'm not, not sure how I feel about this. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> so I was watching this, I was watching this educational short and I'm like, you know, uh, this is pretty outdated, but yeah, no, I knew guys like this when I was in high school, but then I'm like, oh, wait, that was like 92, 94. Yeah. You know, I'm an old guy. I wonder if this is uh, still sort of valid. Hey, Amber, come over here for a second. <laughs> Amber, will you do me a favor? I'm going to send you a link. Uh, tappity, tappity, click, click, click. There you go. Um, so I just sent you a link to a a, a twelve minute long educational short from nineteen fifty nine. It's in black and white and it's called The Troublemaker. It's from McGraw Hill and it was directed by the creepy dead guy haunting the black dress wearing woman from Carnival of Souls. It's a long story, but anyway, it's an educational short and it's really old, but I'm pretty sure that it's still kind of valid. So is there any way you could watch this and give me your thoughts? So uh an hour later, she comes back and she's like, so dad, uh, that video sucked. <laughs> yeah, I know it sucks. It's crazy old. 
They have the biggest football stadium I've ever seen in my life. So, like, literally, the entire town is at this one football game, Dad. <laughs> also, everyone at the school looks and dresses like they're 40. Why is everyone they dressed like a 40? Do. That's what I was like. I, I, I was giving them 30. Yeah. <clears throat> they're, all, they're all dressed like a, a casual Friday at the offices of Price Waterhouse Cooper. Yes. Ridiculous. You, you all you all are dressed like you're going to sell insurance. <laughs> but Amber said, it's like, yeah, this is crazy old, and I don't understand a lot of what they're saying and what they're talking about, because this is just so old. But oh my god, I know I know these people. <laughs> See, there you go. You, you like this makes sense, right? Yeah, there's always that one person. That one person in the group that's like, hey, I'm going to start throwing all this shit around. Hey, mm -hmm. you want to hear this rumor? You want to hear what I heard? You want to know what I saw? Hey, let me tell you this story. Hey, I should be telling you guys this, but let me tell you this. And eventually you just get sick of this person's shit. <laughs> and then suddenly Emerald's like, oh, so you mean, so you mean. And starts mentioning these names of people that they know. And they start talking about people that they know. And it's like, yeah, no, they like this made sense to Amber. Oh, and that okay. made me feel so good, you good. know? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, no, this makes sense. This makes absolute sense. And I'm so happy at the fact that, yeah, the, this, this, this freaking educational short from McGraw Hill and the Carnival of Souls from crazy old long time ago still makes sense to our nation's youth. <laughs> yes. That's important to me. That's good. I'm I, happy about it. And, and I you know? agree. I think it should be important to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it for homework this week. It's a 12 minute video for Christ's sake. Yeah. But, but and like, I, but no, I mean, seriously, do you actually have to train people to be able to spot a douchebag? Yeah. The thing, the thing, it, it, and the, I believe it's part of a series that they would show to high school kids, if I'm not mistaken. Because I, because there, I've seen, I've seen other videos like this that start out with like a situations in group settings, uh -huh. and it's like I don't know. It, it, I guess kids in the '50s needed to know what a click was. Yeah, you know, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This hey, kids, it's the fifties industry <laughs> and science. And kids, why? Why didn't you spot a douchebag? <laughs> I guess is what this video is. Why didn't somebody catch a beaten? Catch a very, know. very big beaten. And I can't imagine. Oh, everyone is really sad at this dance sad because the football team lost oh. like really everyone at this dance is depressed because a football team lost a game i really call bull crap on that <laughs> there's no way yeah no no there was but then again, this might be one of those towns like in East Texas somewhere. This might be some Friday Night Lights scenarios going on. Yeah. I that is a possibility. Saw, I never saw the show Friday Night Lights, but I thought it was weird that this fictional show that lasted for a really long time was based on a nonfiction book. Was it nonfiction? I know, I know it was a movie. Yeah, no, it was a nonfiction book. And I read it and I loved it because it's like, oh, hey, I really like this book because it, it teaches kids a valuable lesson that uh, football, high school football is kind of bullshit. Yeah. And uh, you're kind of risking your life and your health for nothing. <laughs> you have you have a better chance at winning the Powerball than you do of being some sort of professional football player, for Christ's sake. Yeah. 
hey, maybe it'll help if you uh, if you get dogs to kill each other. <laughs> I hear that, that professional football players are really into uh, just trying to help out. Yeah. So that is it for home. You know what, too? What? Another weird thing is uh, uh, Pitch Perfect was a nonfiction novel of taking an inside look into the world of collegiate acapella. <laughs> <laughs> how weird is that that like i i i am a journalist and i think that i found an interesting uh, uh idea for an article hey maybe i can even uh, uh extend it out into a non-fiction book that i think will really entertain some people that are interested in music and oh my god it, it's turned into a movie like how does that journalist feel like pitch perfect three <laughs> How does the guy who spent a year and a half writing a nonfiction novel feel about all this? Number yeah. one, he's probably getting like a good paycheck, but he probably doesn't feel great about it. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I, I just don't think that it's possible to say the term collegiate acapella without it being funny. Yeah. And it, it doesn't even need contact context. Just, just collegiate ac acapella. In that same sort of vein, you know how I who I always feel bad for? Who? The guy who wrote the book Forrest Gump. Yeah, okay. Because the guy, his name is Winston Groom, and he's an award-winning, an award-winning celebrated historian who has written a number of articles. Oh, here's here's book three in my history of Churchill. Okay. Here's Here's a, a, a 1,000 page book of the most world's most famous generals. Here is a really f a serious book about World War II atrocities. And you know what? I have an idea for a tiny little fiction book. Now, let me get back to my serious works because, of course, you all know me as the author of serious works, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, what? They're turning my tiny little fiction book into a movie? Well, it's not going to be a big deal. Let me go back to being a celebrated historian. And now you're just the fucking box of chocolates guy. <laughs> and it's funny because we still get these big, huge books from celebrated historian Winston Groom. And, I, and I'm like, oh, let me let me read. Let me read your uh, uh, author biography. Yup, two big ass paragraphs and not one mention of Forrest Gump, you sly son of a bitch. Yeah. I bet you even I bet you're pretending that 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 never existed so that you can can, st can still continue to be a celebrated award winning uh, historian and journalist. Screw you. You wrote Forrest Gump, you piece of crap. Yes. You wrote a sequel. There was a sequel to Forrest Gump? Yeah. If there was a sequel. There was a a, a novel, a, a novelized sequel called Gump and Company, and it was about the adventures of Forrest Gump and his son. And oh. uh, yeah, it, it was basically like a cash grab. Yeah. But yeah, so, so now he's still releasing these big, huge, celebrated World War II uh, nonfiction history textbooks, and pretending that he didn't write. Uh, my mama always said, <laughs> "I got a box of chocolates, Janae. Do you have AIDS, Janae?" Like, yeah, he didn't. <laughs> he's pretending like he didn't write that. It's like, oh, you poor doomed man. Yeah, I know what they're gonna write on your tombstone, and it's not going to be celebrated historian. <laughs> it's gonna be a picture of Tom Hanks on your gravestone. <laughs> You can't deny it. You can't deny it. Might as well embrace it. Mm -hmm. The Bubba Gump shrimp restaurants are because of you. Are there actually, uh, are there actually Bubba Gump shrimp restaurants? Yeah. Yeah. There's one in, uh, in San Francisco. Uh, Natasha and I went to it once. It's really fucking weird. <laughs> I, really fucking uh, weird. Yeah. Imagine a Bob's big boy, but Forrest Gump themed really weird and all the walls are covered with like Forrest Gump memorabilia quote unquote like oh there's <laughs> uh, an article of his uh, success as a foot 
player. Here's a picture of him meeting fucking Gandhi and shit. Oh, man. Here's, here's a picture of Forrest Gump getting a blowjob from David Bowie in Studio 51. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a bit weird. It's it's a tourist trap, but there's a number of them all over the place. Sad. That is sad. Sad and, and frightening. I got to go with frightening as that, well. Man. Yeah. And that is it for homework this week. And I honestly and truly so trahanulistly. Lee. We really do hope that your hearts, minds, and Google search histories have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think we're getting out of here that easily, bucko. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And next week, in an attempt to zig when people expect this podcast to zag, we will be reading a ridiculously lengthy article on the history the rise and fall of margarine of margarine. Yes. Yeah. And I saw this article and I'm like, Oh my God, this is a ridiculously long article about the history of margarine. I am in no way going to read. Oh my God. They mentioned Fabio. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't think they'd mention Fabio, but if you're going to talk about margarine, you got to mention Fabio. Okay. I'm in this. Mm-hmm. I am in on this. So that's next week. I sent you the link. Yes. It's from a uh, food centered website, I think called the takeout <laughs> food. They do a, a number of like lengthy articles about the history of blank. I read a really good one about the history of Thanksgiving that really just said, Hey, everything you know about Thanksgiving, it's kind of bullshit. <laughs> so they do really good articles like this. So this should be good. It sounds ridiculously boring but it should be good so that's next week so join us next week for more homework with the pop on film podcast yes see ya (laughs) homework fans